What we bad guys, we are still looking at a relative frequency curve. So we are going to look at examples on how we can estimate what we have discussed in the previous videos from the real graph. So we have example one that is given, which is saying that given the data below, the data is showing max with classes of 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79 are the, their respective frequencies. And the task is requiring us to draw an OGIF, an OGIF, and we use it to determine the median. But first and foremost, we say that when you are drawing the OGIF, we, we plot cumulative frequency against the class boundaries, which we don't have. So implying that we must use our frequency distribution table and locate those values such that we can be in position to draw our OGIF or cumulative frequency curve. So, solution. We are going to start from drawing our frequency distribution table that will allow us or in our frequency distribution table we must include the values of class boundaries and the values of cumulative frequency. Uh, we say the upper scrollum can be class, or you can even put it as max because our class for today is max. You can put class or max, but our class is running from 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49. 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79. So those are our classes. That's why our classes is stopping on 70 to 79 just for the purpose of simplicity. Let us use the second column as the one for class boundaries. Class boundaries. The column for class boundary, you can put it anywhere, but so long as you do the correct things, it will be marked. So we have said for all data like this one, when you are obtaining class boundaries, for the lower class boundary, we subtract to 0 0.5, and for the upper class boundary, we add 0 0.5. And like those one, we see decimal places or decimal points where you have subtract depending on the number of decimal places they are recorded. But for this case, we just subtract to 0 0.5 and add 0 0.5. So we start with it. The first class, the, our, our lower class limit is 20, and uh, if you want to obtain the lower class limit, class boundary, we say D, we get 20 minus 0 0.5. So if you subtract 0 0.5 from 20, we shall get 19.5 to the upper one, we said we add 0 0.5, which is 20. 29.5. So we say the upper class boundary in the previous class become the lower class boundary in the next class. So if maybe if you don't want to use that logic, just see, be subtracting and adding normally. Still we get the same answer. Like here, 30 minus 0.5, you still we are getting 29, 29.52. 39 we add which is 39.5 so 39.5 
Then for 40, we get 39.5 to 49.5. Then 50, we get 49.5 to 59.5. Then for 60, we get 59.5 to 69.5. And then for 70, we shall get 70, uh, 69.5. 5 to 79.5 69.5 to 79.5 Then we have another column for for frequency frequency which we are going to denote as F so frequency which I just copy what is given in the table as the first one is for 6, 12, 8, 7, and 7. If you have enough time, you can even go ahead and get it. See, total, if your time is enough, that is a measure of F. So 4 plus 6, you get 10. 12 plus 10, you get 22. Plus 3, you get 30. Then plus this one gets 37 and we get 40. So you come ahead and then since you want to draw an O GIF and say this, it must be plotted as a stimulative frequency against class boundary. So what we are missing, we are going to call it stimulative frequency column. And remember what we say that the, it is a must that the first stimulative frequency must always be equal to the first T frequency and the last cumulative frequency must always be equal to the summation of f so since we shall put our first cumulative frequency as 4 4 plus 6 we get 10 10 plus 12 we get 22 22 plus 3 we get plus 8 we get 30 30 plus 7 get 37 37 plus 3 get 40. So this one serves as you are representing of 8 small boxes.